Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, sulfur, one of the very important mineral in our body. Uh, mainly derived from sulfated amino acids, mainly derived from protein. Uh, some of the sulfated amino acids are methionine, cysteine, homocysteine, taurine. Uh, methionine is an essential amino acid, means you need to have it in your diet on a day to day basis. Uh, cysteine, homocysteine, those are you know non-essential amino acids which are formed in the body. Okay. Uh, some amount of sulfur, organic sulfur, is found directly into the food, from the food. And this are onion, garlic, uh, cruciferous vegetables. Any food, you know, uh, specifically uh, some of the vegetables which have some smell uh, and that have organic sulfur in it. Uh, sulfur is also called gandak in Hindi. Gandak means it smells. So sulfur gives that smell. I don't know if any any of you have gone to, uh, you know, Vajuresh, but you any of your hot geysers, you know, uh, in your country or in your uh, in your uh, state. Uh, this particular, uh, you know, hot geysers have uh, sulfur in it. It's sulfated water. Okay. So when this when when you in the when when you're going there to take a bath, you will see that smell coming out of that water, and that's the sulfur. And if you ask, uh, you know, if you find out that who are the people who are coming to this hot geysers primarily, are the people who have some joint problems or they have some skin problem. So that means basically there is probably uh, kind of that knowledge coming from you know generations that uh, you know when you take bath in that uh, hot geysers. It's a sulfated water, so probably sulfur uh, or that mineral helps with the joint pains and skin. And and you know, I mean, if you if you look at it, if you if uh, you know, obviously I'm going to go in detail, but you'll understand that it does help because it produces a lot of those organo sulfur compounds, uh, you know, uh, and that has effect on your joints and skin and hair and pretty much everything. Okay, so we'll go in detail. Uh, sulfur is also present in two vitamin B. Okay, so which are those two vitamin B? Thiamine and biotin. Now, biotin, if you remember, a lot of people take the supplements biotin uh, for hair, right? Uh, people who have hair loss, they take biotin. Okay, now what are the functions of sulfur? So, let's talk about uh, each and every uh, important function that sulfur has. Uh, so cellular energy production and metabolism. So sulfur is important for uh, you know Krebs cycle uh, because the acetyl CoA and CoA uh, those compounds are uh, made from sulfur. So that's your kind of uh, some of the you know products uh, or byproducts I could say uh, of uh, that Krebs cycle. So it is definitely as I said it is important for formation of energy. You know it gives you energy. Uh, it also maintains blood glucose level. So sulfur is important for maintaining blood glucose level. Why? Because insulin, insulin is your, uh, you know, uh, hormone which requires sulfur. Okay. Uh, sulfur also protects nerve and uh, nerve tissue. It synthesizes neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are important. Uh, of course, as you know, some of them are acetylcholine, uh, you know, serine, uh, your uh, you know your uh, serotonin so some of those sulfurs are ready uh, very important uh, it improves memory it uh, dampens excessive firing uh, it has antioxidant protection so glutathione glutathione which scavenges or neutralizes free radicals and recycle oxidized antioxidants so glutathione i'm sure a uh, lot of doctors and nutritionists who are taking this course would know what glutathione is uh, it's uh, it's it's basically one of the most powerful antioxidant which is present in our body which scavenges uh, free radical so free radicals are basically uh, you know uh, radicals which causes damage Okay, it causes inflammation in the body, so it prevents the uh, excessive damage uh, to uh, you know through free radicals by scavenging it. Okay, uh, then uh, sulfur is also important for blood flow. Why it is important for blood flow? Because fibrinogen and heparin, those two important, uh, those are two important organosulfur compounds. So it produces both blood clotting factor as well as anticoagulant. Okay, anticoagulants mean it prevents the coagulation of blood. It prevents the clotting. Okay, and blood clotting factors are basically factors which helps with the clotting. So if you have a say nick on your skin and if you're bleeding, uh, basically that uh, 
you know uh, fibrinogen will immediately clot that bleeding it will stop that bleeding okay so sulfur is required for that also uh, cartilage and bones so remember i told you that a lot of these people they go uh, they go to uh, hot geysers so why because uh, the sulfur is important for formation of glycosaminoglycan and also chondroitin sulfate and hyaluronic acid and they are part of cartilage and bones okay so to, to have your healthy bones and your cartilage your joints it's important that we take enough amount of sulfur or sulfated amino acid which is your methionine okay uh, detoxification uh, of course by means of conjugation chelation uh, sulfur is important for detox detoxification means to get rid of toxins in the body and that's primarily because of glutathione okay uh, regulation of dna replication and transcription so basically for to maintain your uh, dna you know uh, that would prevent uh, cancer actually you know so you want to make sure that uh, uh, to maintain your dna uh, health uh, you require sulfur now other effect of sulfur it, it it helps in digestion because it helps in production of hydrochloric acid now hydrochloric acid is the acid which is present in your stomach okay for digestion of food uh, it supports healthy lipoprotein balance so you remember i'm sure everybody knows about cholesterol ldl hdl you know this is a good cholesterol ldl hdl is a good cholesterol and so cholesterol for formation of this uh, cholesterol and uh, you know to have this balance of uh, good cholesterol bad cholesterol you require uh, sulfur uh, adrenal gland support and hormone production so there are some of these hormones uh, which required sulfur your cortisol aldosterone testosterone you know uh, those are important uh, you require sulfur for that uh, then also imagine for pro proper immune response so enhancing you know your uh infection fighting cells so your lymphocytes your cytotoxic t cells natural killer cells these are all the very important uh, cells which uh, which uh, kind of prevents infection it it uh, enhances your immune system okay and for that you also require sulfur now one more thing which uh, i i will go a little bit more in detail is n acetyl cysteine now n acetyl cysteine uh, has lot of function in the body now one of the most important function is it protects against mucus formation in the lungs okay so a lot of time when you have bronchitis and when you have a lot of this uh, cough you go to doctors and doctors will write uh, a nac prescription n acetyl cysteine is also called nac now this for nac actually uh, some more i mean all the doctors would know that when the patient comes with crocine uh, you know toxicity we we give nac and what nac does it basically increases the glutathione level which detoxifies or which removes crocin from the body it, it, it helps in removal of uh, you know uh, acetaminophen from the body okay so nac is very 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 important and you require sulfur for formation of nac okay uh, then for eyes uh, you know your sulfur is important because it decreases the cataract formation and uh, keratin one of the uh, you know most uh, highly spoke about uh, organosulfur compounds especially among women because obviously we always say oh, we uh, you know i buy keratinized shampoo and this and that you know we spend so much money uh, on the shampoos you know which has keratin but uh, think about if we have food which is high in sulfur uh, which will help uh, form this keratin okay so for formation of skin hair nails keratin is present keratin is present in skin keratinized epithelial cells we know it you know keratin is present in your cornea it's present in your hair so sulfur is sulfur is important for formation of keratin okay uh, here we have just kind of listed all the important organosulfur compounds which we just discussed so i'm not going to go too much in detail in that uh, some of the sulfur rich food so these are sulfur rich food uh, which are primarily um, you get organic sulfur from this food uh, so here your you know your onion your cauliflower uh, you know of course your beet uh, you know your drumstick leaves and uh, drumstick uh, you know what do i say seeds your drumstick seeds are very high in sulfur in fact you know in us we have this uh, uh, you know those drumstick seeds powder available in the capsule and a lot of people with joint problems they take it so i do recommend that we should have this drumsticks in our diet uh, on a day to day basis so uh, you know either you can put drumstick leaves or also called moringa leaves you know you can make a powder put the moringa leaves in the in the food uh, or you can just have a drumstick uh, you know uh, 
uh, vegetable or you put it in a curry you put it in a uh, dal that you make you know so that's how you get your sulfur okay some of the other uh, uh, food which you can get sulfur from is your garlic okay uh, your uh, your eggs uh, of course your fish okay so this is some of the good sources organic sulfur directly sulfur comes from this food okay uh, cysteine remember i told you about cysteine cysteine is formed in the body but there you can get cysteine from food also so some of the cysteine rich food is uh, primarily your you know your garlic again uh, pretty much you know garlic your eggs your choli uh, some of the uh, fish uh, you know seeds are high in the cysteine you know so your uh, your black till your sesame seed black sesame seed your white sesame seed peanuts okay soya this is your soya over here okay and your uh, uh, coconut and some of the other foods so cysteine can be available from food also besides uh, being formed in the body uh, methionine is uh, another essential amino acid extremely important to have it in your diet okay as i told you that uh, this uh, sulfated amino acid will release sulfur that sulfur will be used in formation of all this organo sulfur compound that i spoke about okay so which are the food which are high in uh, methionine again remember i talked about uh, peanuts uh, so you make pe peanut powder put it in your food for children food also you can put uh, peanut powder for adults they can just put peanut in the dal or vegetables you know make peanut curry sesame seeds uh, also your liver uh, you know your uh, dairy products are very high in uh, methionine so make sure that your children have you know after two years of age uh, you know uh, if mother wants to start the top for uh, milk you know uh, they can start a dairy or even young children six months to two, uh, two years of age you can give them dahi paneer you know this is paneer over here on um, uh, right side corner uh, lower corner and over here this is koa koa is basically uh, kind of made from milk you know mawa we can we call it mawa koa uh, so do use koa in your uh, curries you know very high in sulfur actually very high in methionine which gives out sulf sulfur okay and of course your non-veg food are high in sulfur uh, children who have a good amount of non-veg food, we do see that they do have a good, good, uh, uh, good height. And uh, what I've seen actually is uh, there is an article by Dr. Michael Golden, and he's he's written extensively about sulfur. You know, and he feels that uh, basically for your linear growth, uh, sulfated amino acids are very, very important. Okay, and that's why I'm kind of stressing on this foods which you must give it to children. You know, which will uh, help with the linear growth. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of sulfur. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of sulfur, symptoms of its deficiency, sulfur rich food sources. Sulfur is the third most abundant mineral found in our body. Most of it is derived from sulfated amino acids. Amino acids make up the proteins. There are 22 amino acids. Out of 22, a few of them have sulfur. The most important sulfated amino acids are methionine and cysteine. Methionine cannot be synthesized in the body. Hence, it has to be taken from the diet. On the other hand, cysteine is synthesized in our body. However, it requires a steady supply of sulfur. Methionine and cysteine cannot be stored in the body. The excess amount is excreted through urine. Otherwise, it gets stored in the form of glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant produced in the liver. It protects the cells from damage and against various diseases. It also helps to remove toxins from the body. Many other compounds have sulfur too. Let us have a look at the importance of those compounds. I will first tell you about keratin. Keratin is found in the outer layer of the human skin. For healthy hair, nails and cell growth, we need keratin. 
Chondroitin sulfate is another compound that has sulfur. It delays the breakdown of cartilage in joints. Improves joint mobility. Might help in relieving pain caused by osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a condition where joint cartilage begins to break down. Another sulfur containing compound is alpha lipoic acid. Energy production and enzyme function requires alpha lipoic acid. It also helps in lowering blood sugar levels. Apart from proteins, some B vitamins also contain sulfur. One of them is vitamin B1, which is also known as thiamine. We require thiamine for normal development and growth. It is also required during reproduction and breastfeeding. Biotin is another B vitamin which has sulfur. Biotin is important for healthy hair growth. It plays a role in cell signaling and the regulation of genes. Let us now see the several roles of sulfur in our body. Sulfur helps in the process of digestion, protecting the lungs from mucus formation and infections, maintaining healthy eyes, reducing the chances of development of cataract in the eyes, developing the central nervous system and building a strong immunity. Insulin production also requires sulfur. Sulfur is also required during synthesis of collagen. Collagen is a protein found in bones, muscle and skin. It strengthens the skin. Production of hormones like cortisol also requires sulfur. Aldosterone and testosterone are other examples. I will now tell you the various functions of these hormones. Cortisol helps to control blood sugar levels and reduces inflammation. It is also called a stress hormone. Aldosterone's main role is to regulate blood pressure. Testosterone is a male sex hormone. It helps in building bone mass and muscle density. Let us look at the symptoms of sulfur deficiency. Deficiency of sulfur causes wrinkling of skin, brittle hair and nails. Joint pain, convulsions and memory loss are also seen. Apart from this, toxins accumulate in the body. This can increase the risk of cancer. The risk of type 2 diabetes and heart diseases also increases. Gastric issues, rashes and delayed wound healing have also been observed. We will now look at some food sources rich in sulfur. There is no recommended dietary allowance for sulfur. It is recommended to consume sulfur-rich food daily. Foods rich in methionine and cysteine are good sources of sulfur. Eggs, fish and chicken are good sources of methionine. Nuts, milk, seeds and grains also contain methionine. Chicken, cheese, eggs and legumes are good sources of cysteine. Next, we will look at the vitamin-rich food sources that have sulfur. Whole grains, chicken, beans and nuts are sources of thiamine. Whereas goat liver, egg, fish, nuts and seeds have biotin. Sulfur is also present in garlic, onion, cabbage and cauliflower. Remember to include these foods in your daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.
Welcome to the spoken tutorial on sulfur rich vegetarian recipes. In this tutorial, we will learn about benefits of sulfur in our body, a few vegetarian recipes. Sulfur is the third most abundant mineral found in our body. There are 22 amino acids out of which a few have sulfur. It is derived from sulfated amino acids. The most important sulfated amino acids are methionine and cysteine. Sulfur helps in the process of digestion. It protects the lungs from mucus formation and infections. Developing the central nervous system also requires this mineral. It also helps in production of insulin. The importance of sulfur has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Let us now see the preparation of the recipes. Before we begin, note that in this tutorial, one bowl is 150 milliliters. Our first recipe is sandwich dhokla. To make this recipe, you will need 3 tablespoons of little millet, 2 tablespoons of black gram with skin, 3 tablespoons of curd, 2 handful of washed gogu leaves, 2 washed and chopped green chilies, 2 to 3 cloves of garlic. You will also need a handful of washed and chopped coriander leaves. 1 teaspoon ginger paste 1 teaspoon garlic paste For tempering, you will require half teaspoon mustard seeds half teaspoon cumin seeds 1 tablespoon sesame seeds 1 fourth teaspoon asafoetida powder 5 to 6 washed curry leaves You will also need 2 teaspoons of oil or ghee and salt as per taste. Procedure Wash and soak the little millet and black gram for 6 to 8 hours. Drain the water and grind them into a smooth batter. Transfer this into a bowl. Add curd and salt to the batter. Mix it well to make it smooth. Cover the bowl and leave it to ferment for 6 to 8 hours in a warm place. Once the batter is fermented, add chopped green chilies, ginger and garlic paste. Mix everything well again. Grease a steaming plate with oil and pour the batter on it. Tap the plate to spread the batter evenly. Next add half glass of water in a steamer. Place the plate in the steamer. Please be careful while doing so. Close the steamer with a lid and steam this for 10 to 12 minutes. Allow the plate to cool. Later, cut the dhokla into diagonal pieces. Keep this aside for later use. I will now tell you how to make the chutney. In a grinder, add gogu leaves, coriander leaves, chili, garlic and salt. Grind it into a thick paste by adding a little water if required. Drumstick leaves can be used if gogu leaves are not available. To make the sandwich, take a piece of dhokla we made earlier. Spread the chutney evenly on it. Cover it with another piece. It should look like a sandwich. Repeat the same process for other pieces as well. To make the tempering, heat oil or ghee in a pan. Add mustard seeds, cumin seeds, sesame seeds, asafoetida and curry leaves. Once the seeds splutter, pour the tempering on the dhoklas. Sandwich dhokla is ready. 10 to 12 pieces of sandwich dhokla has around 93 mg of sulfur. Our next recipe is Prozo Millet Upma To make this recipe, you will need 2 tablespoons of Prozo Millet A handful of washed fenugreek leaves 1 medium chopped onion 
वन टी स्पून जिंजर पेस्ट वन टी स्पून गार्लिक पेस्ट टू वॉश्ड एंड चॉप्ड ग्रीन चिलीज यू विल ऑल्सो रिक्वायर वन टेबल स्पून ऑफ वॉश्ड एंड चॉप्ड कैरेट फोर टू फाइव कॉलीफ्लावर फ्लोरेट्स वन टेबल स्पून ग्रीन पीस ए हैंडफुल ऑफ वॉश्ड एंड चॉप्ड कोरियांडर लीव्स वी विल नीड वन टी स्पून ऑफ टर्मरिक पाउडर क्यूमिन पाउडर कोरियांडर पाउडर यू विल नीड वन टेबल स्पून ऑफ ऑयल एंड सॉल्ट टू टेस्ट प्रोसीजर वॉश एंड सोक प्रोसोमिलेट फॉर सिक्स टू एट आवर्स ड्रेन द वॉटर एंड कीप असाइड हीट ऑयल इन अ पैन एंड एड गार्लिक ग्रीन चिली जिंजर एंड सोटे फॉर अ मिनट एड चॉप्ड अनियंस एंड वेजिटेबल्स सोटे अंटिल अनियंस टर्न सॉफ्ट एड ऑल द स्पाइसिस एंड मिक्स वेल एड प्रोजो मिलेट एंड वन कप ऑफ वॉटर एंड अलाउ इट टू कुक ऑन मीडियम फ्लेम कवर द पैन विद द लिड एंड कुक फॉर फाइव मिनट्स Proso millet upma is ready. Transfer this into a bowl and garnish with coriander leaves. You can serve the upma with curd. This recipe gives around 165 mg of sulfur. Our third recipe is mixed vegetable cutlets. To make this recipe, you will require 2 tablespoons of barnyard millet, 2 tablespoons of little millet. 2 tablespoons of kodo millet 2 tablespoons of roasted bengal gram flour you will also need a handful of washed and chopped amaranth leaves a handful of washed and sliced cabbage 2 tablespoons of washed and chopped carrot 2 tablespoons of chopped onion you will need 1 tablespoon of ginger paste garlic paste You will also need 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder, chili powder, coriander powder, garam masala powder, chopped green chilies. You will need 2 teaspoons of oil and salt as per taste. Procedure: Soak barnyard kodo and little millet for 6 to 8 hours. Drain them. Dry roast on a medium flame until they turn light brown in color. Allow them to cool. Transfer them into a mixer grinder and grind them into a fine powder. Keep this aside for later use. Heat oil in a pan. Add onions, ginger garlic paste and green chili. Sauté until onion turns soft. Add cabbage and carrot to the pan and sauté for a few minutes. Next add amaranth leaves and mix well. Add the spices and salt. Mix again and cook for five to six minutes. Allow this to cool. Add the cooked vegetables to the powder we made earlier. Now add roasted Bengal gram flour and mix everything well. Make a dough out of it by adding water little by little. Divide the dough into four parts and shape them as cutlets. Heat oil in a pan. Shallow fry the cutlets on each side until they turn golden brown in color. Mixed vegetable cutlets are ready. Four cutlets have around 144 mg of sulfur. Our last recipe is pan fried jackfruit seeds. To make this recipe, you will need 12 seeds of jackfruit, one medium sized chopped onion, 1 medium chopped tomato you will need 1 tablespoon of ginger paste garlic paste roasted sesame seeds lemon juice you will also need 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder chili powder coriander and cumin powder you will need 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee and salt as per taste procedure Pressure cook the jackfruit seeds for 4 to 5 whistles. Drain them and transfer them onto a plate. Allow to cool. Once cooled, peel them. 
apply spices salt ginger garlic paste and lemon juice to the seeds keep it aside for 10 minutes heat oil in a pan add the onions and tomato and saute for 5 minutes next add the jackfruit seeds to the pan fry this for 5 to 6 minutes once the seeds turn crisp turn off the flame transfer this into a bowl and garnish with roasted sesame seeds pan fried jackfruit seeds recipe is ready this recipe gives around 472 mg of sulfur include these recipes in your daily diet for good health this brings us to the end of this tutorial thank you for joining